Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, so I think uh, we have two more uh, major topics to cover for the day. The first one being uh, the event visualizer, where we are going to discuss how uh, we are going to visualize uh, tracker and event data as charts. And the second is uh, the maps. So we'll be um, discussing how we can uh, uh, visualize the event data and the tracker data that we have collected in, in a maps format. So uh, out of the two topics, we will first discuss about the charts. Most of uh, what we'll be covering today for the charts has already, I mean, most of you must be familiar because we have uh, uh, kind of uh, dealt with uh, most of these topics uh, in the foundation uh, uh, course as well. But we will just do a basic recap and see uh, what additional features are available in the visualizer app and of course, what are the limitations. So. Um, let me share my presentation first. Right, so uh, the objectives for this session is to uh, describe what uh, Event Visualizer app is about and uh, what is there in the interface and also understand how to create visualizations using tracker data and describe the limitations of uh, Event Visualizer app when working with tracker data. So. The event visualizer application enables analysis of events in charts format. It is uh, somewhat similar to the data visualizer app, but this is specifically for tracker and event data. Whereas data visualizer app, we are also using for uh, uh, visualization of aggregate data. Um, uh, this event visualizer app is particularly useful for visualization of variances in option sets. So for example, if we are having a uh, event or uh, where we are capturing a data element which has uh, option sets attached for example it could be the, the, the doors one and two or maybe the gender as male and female it is quite, quite handy in um, uh, visualizing these kind of variances in the option sets but uh, uh, we must also uh, uh, take into consideration that event visualizer only allows you to work with data from a single program stage right so uh, we are not able to pull data from multiple or different program stages and visualize them in the event visualizer. So there is no, and also there is no enrollment type output option for event visualizer. So it is uh, only visualizing the events, no enrollment. And also therefore we can't actually uh, combine uh, various data elements from different program stages and visualize. So that's a major limitation in the event visualizer app as it is now. Um, however, this application in its current form will be replaced, but we are not able to uh, mention at this point of time when uh, it will be replaced and uh, the new application will be made available. Right, uh, so we use in the Visualize app, we can actually design a chart uh, based on the event data. We can save it, we can download it, and we can also add it to the dashboard. So what is there in the event visualizer interface? So it is somewhat similar to all other uh, DHS2 analytics applications that we have discussed so far. So uh, when it comes to uh, uh, the, the data dimension, we have the program and program stages, which kind of defines the data source. And then you also have a range of other dimensions, uh, which includes data, element, data elements, uh, or attributes, periods, and uh, organization units. And one key thing, which, which is not there in event reports that you have in uh, event visualizer is the chart type. So we can select which type of chart you want to uh, visualize, right? So what are, uh, I mean, how do we kind of create a visualization with tracker data using event visualizer? So going back to basics, uh, we always need to uh, remind uh, about the tracker data model. So as for the data models, um, as for tracker data model, we identify different components, right? So uh, we have to configure them uh, in the Visualizer app for us to generate a visualizer. So uh, first of all, the most important thing is of course to know the data source, which is the program stage, uh, data elements and attributes, um, which will be visualized in the Visualizer application and then something different that you didn't have in the event reports is to select the chart type. So when we do that, it will kind of determine by nature of analytic report 
to be presented. For example, um, if we want a visualization related to trends, right? So in that case, are we going to use column charts, line charts, bar charts, right? Um, I mean, there are like about uh, more than, I mean, somewhere around the five to 10 different chart types that we can use in uh, event visualize application. So uh, when to use what chart type, uh, you, you, you always need to figure out. So you are not actually going to use, uh, try out all different types of charts uh, for all the given use cases. Um, it has to be rational why we are selecting a particular chart type over the other. And uh, then we also need to define the data, period and organization unit. And finally, we have to, um, I mean, this is something that we all also did in the uh, event report application. Like we also uh, can decide what will be the layout, right? So uh, based on that, we can decide like what will come as the category dimension, what will be the series. So this is something also that we will try out during our demonstration. However, there are a few limitations uh, in the event visualize application uh, working with tracker data. The first thing is that it does not allow uh, visualization in line listing, meaning you cannot visualize data by list of individual events. So for example, by names, age, type of health outcome, laboratory result wise, a list you can't uh, develop uh, using um, the event visualizer. And also it doesn't allow data analysis from multiple program stages. So this we have to keep in mind when we are using event visualizer. But having said that, for aggregation purposes, we are kind of introducing um, another concept uh, that we will do tomorrow. Um, so uh, that concept is called program indicators. So using program indicators, we might be able to uh, have, I mean, extend some uh, functionality. Like for example, if we want to connect data from couple of stages and produce aggregate uh, visualizations that you can do using program indicators. So I'm not actually going to um, um, uh, discuss anything about program indicators today because that will be discussed separately tomorrow. Right, so let us do the demo on uh, analysis with uh, event visualizer. Let me share my other screen, all right. So right now I'm logged into the instance. Let me refresh so that I'm not logged out. Fine. Right. So uh, where do we find the event visualize application? So right now we are in the dashboard. So you go to apps and you click on the apps icon here and you find this uh, icon. Uh, the application named event visualizer. So we click and open the event visualizer. And once we do, do that, it will take a moment based on uh, your internet connectivity and Let me refresh just in case. All right, uh, let me close and open my browser again. Most probably it's due to my internet connection. Probably I'm located a bit uh, 
far from the original server. All right, finally it loads. Let me share my presentation again. Sorry, not the presentation, the browser. Right, okay. So this is uh, the event visualizer application. Right, so what do we see in this interface? So it's somewhat similar to the interface of many other analytic tools that you see in the uh, DHIS2. So the major difference that you are seeing on this uh, event visualizer app compared to the event report is um, the availability of the chart type. So you can see here there are different types of visualizations, um, chart visualizations that you can uh, perform using the event visualizer, using the event visualizer, right, which are listed above. And then of course on to your left we have the various dimensions. So first one what we have here is the data dimension. And then we also have the period, right? And then the organization unit. So these are the three core dimensions available. Um, uh, whenever you are doing any basic analysis of uh, uh, analysis using DHIS2. But in addition, there are many other dimensions that you have created uh, in your instance that may be available for you to use uh, when you are analyzing. But uh, as minimum, you should have the data period and organization unit and the chart type. Then we have another set of options um, on your right top. So the first thing is the update button. So whenever you do some configuration here on your left, you need to click on update um, to uh, get the updated visualization. And then we have the favorite button here. So which has uh, many different options right now only the open button is uh, uh, made available but all others are grayed out because we are just starting from uh, because we just opened the application and then we have the layout button we will come back to it a bit later and of course we have uh, the options uh, tab here which uh, includes um, um, many different uh, customizations that we can perform on the visualization we, we, we design and then we also have another button to download uh, the visualization we produce here. So what I will try to do is um, just to open one visualization which is already saved. So to do that I click on favorite, open and then I will select the second one AstraZeneca first and second dose uh, by location. So I click and open this and this is the visualization that we get. So what I did here is to open an already saved visualization somebody has configured before, right? Why I did so is to show uh, how, how things are configured here. So you can clearly see when you click on the data dimension. Now we have a program, a particular stage and selected data items from this stage uh, uh, already uh, visualized here. And then for the period, it shows that we have, uh, they have fixed a period and the organization unit is also set, right? So these steps are what we are going to do, perform now, okay? All right. So let me kind of uh, start with a new visualization. So what I'm going to do here is to click on favorite and new, right? Now we have to uh, define the parameters that we are going to um, configure to obtain the visualization we want. So first thing is to select the chart type. So uh, I will keep it simple. So I will select the default um, column chart type. So it is already selected. And then in the, in the data dimension, we have to select a program stage and the uh, data items from that program stage. So I will select the program 
So for an example, let me take uh, the COVID-19 um, vaccination registry. And then the stage, I will select um, the vaccination stage, just like that, which is there here. And then I will select, now we, you can see, so I mean, whatever the data elements and the attributes which are available, right? in this program and the program stage will be listed here so it's a big list so in case if you want to kind of make it shorter we can either select data elements from here so it will only display the data elements and not the program uh, program attributes so i will select the dose number this one i can double click and then it comes here right and then, of course, uh, the vaccination name, right? So here we have the vaccine name. So the I double click, right? And once I do that, out of all the data elements and attributes, which are actually we have not visual, uh, we are not selected uh, attributes here. It's only the data elements. So out of all the data elements, uh, the ones we select are the ones that you are seeing onto the box uh, inside this box here. What we can actually do is now we know that those number data element has an option set attached to it, right? So due to that, we can do something special here. We can kind of filter which options we need to visualize. So I'm going to select first dose and second dose, right? So I'm kind of filtering the dose number so that only the data related to first and second dose will be visualized not the ones that are coming from the booster dose or the third dose and then and then from the vaccine name i'm going to select just one vaccine which is astrazeneca right so now we are done with uh, the data dimension. Next, we have to configure the period. So the period, I will keep it as this year. And then next is the organization unit. So what is selected is uh, the user subborg unit. So I can either uh, keep that or else I can select something else. So the, for the moment, I will just keep it as user subunit, right? And what I can do is actually, um, I can click on this update button here and see what will be the visualization going to look like. So let me click on update button. And this is what I'm seeing. So what's the problem here? Actually, there is no problem, right? As per the criteria we have defined, we have got the visualization. It's just that what we had in our mind is not what we are seeing here, because we might be interested to uh, we might be interested to see a chart which has more columns, not just one of them, right? But what has actually happened now is if we look at uh, the visualization here. We are actually seeing uh, all the org units up here which has been filtered, right? And we are just seeing um, the total dose of AstraZeneca, which has been, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, we have given to the patients in the year 2022. So how are we going to get the visualization that we probably have in our mind? So what we can actually do is, we can go to this layout tab and we can see how the layout has been configured. So ideally, uh, uh, we can select what we don't want to come in this visualization to the report, right? So uh, under, under the uh, report filter. So what we will do is we, we actually don't uh, want the period to be involved in the visualization. So I'm going to push the period to the filter because like it's only in the year 2022. The category dimension defines what will be the x-axis in this particular chart type, right? So in that case, I believe what I actually want to see is how, I mean, uh, each user subunit, like for example, the second level in our unit hierarchy, how 
the second level is doing when it comes to dispersing uh, each of the vaccines. So for that, I need to have the organization unit coming here as the category dimension. What does the series, di series dimension implies? So basically what series di dimension implies is it will be grouping whatever we are mentioning in the category dimension. So in the x-axis we are having categories. So um, we'll be probably as per the uh, uh, configuration we are doing here, we'll be seeing all the organization units and under each organization unit, whatever we are mentioning here will be grouped. So I think what we, uh, we can have the, uh, uh, not the vaccine name, because vaccine name, we only have AstraZeneca, but what we would like to see is a dose number. So when we do that, ideally we should be seeing all the org units in the x-axis, which will be grouped by the dose number, right? So uh, I think our visualization is okay for now, and let me click on update. And when I do that, this is what I am getting, right? I think uh, uh, something similar is what you wanted to visualize. So uh, we have the column chart. And if we just look at what we have in this column chart, we have all the org units in the level two uh, listed in this x-axis. And it has been grouped based on the doses. So you are seeing the dose, um, first dose here, and the second dose, uh, the first and second dose are both uh, visualized here in two different colors, okay? Right, so uh, let us see what other uh, further customizations we can do in this visualization. So one thing we can do is we can click on this button called uh, options. And here we are seeing a uh, lot of different configurations we can perform. So the first thing is show values. So when we uh, click on, I mean, it has already been ticked. So when the show values is ticked, you will be seeing the actual values in the chart itself. So this is fine. Uh, and another um, a nice, uh, I mean, a uh, feature that comes very handy is to uh, hide not applicable data. Sometimes like uh, you may uh, get some uh, uh, config, uh, some, some uh, say, for example, uh, it could be a org unit or it could be another dimension where you may have values which are not applicable and it may not, not uh, look so good to have them visualize in the uh, chart. So when we click on this, when we select this hide uh, not applicable data, uh, they will be hidden from your visualization. Um, so here what I can actually do is to sort this chart from low to high so that we'll be getting the lowest values on to your left and the highest values we'll be having on to the right. And then a few other things we can do, we can actually give the uh, axis some names so uh, for the range axis, this is basically the uh, y, we can uh, give the y axis the dose number and then the domain axis, which is in, in this case uh, the x axis, we can give the name location and then of course we can give the chart a title because right now we don't have a nice title. So we can mention AstraZeneca first and second doses by location, first and second doses by location, right? So with these additional configurations, we can click on update and we should be able to see uh, the updated uh, chart where we have the title, chart title, and the labels for the x, x and y axis and then all our values arranged from lowest to the highest, right? Uh, we also have a few other uh, options available here. The first thing being we can, of course, save this chart, right? So uh, uh, if we open uh, an existing chart, we can uh, save, save it as or else we can, uh, if it is a new chart, we can actually save it. So when we are saving, it is asking for a name and a description. So you can uh, pro give a nice name and a description uh, for this chart. In addition, um, you also have this feature to download. So when we click on download, there are many different options, but commonly used ones include uh, image and a PDF. So uh, when you click here, 
it will download the image file of this chart and uh, you can also download the same chart as a PDF right so uh, now that we have demonstrated how to design a simple chart why don't you try the first exercise in the learner's guide so uh, we can give you 10 minutes to try it by your own so only do the first exercise under event visualizer in the learner's guide so uh, um, that first exercise is about practicing the same uh, steps that I have followed in uh, producing this output. So if there are, if there are any questions, please uh, ask them in the Slack or the chat and our team will be ready to answer. So see you in 10 minutes.